Okay, um, in this video and the next several videos, we're going to take some time to talk a little bit about inverse hyperbolic functions. And remember how this works now. If we say that the inverse hyperbolic function of x equals y, that's the same thing as saying that the hyperbolic sine of y is equal to x. These are two equivalent statements here. And this is the graph here of the hyperbolic sine function. This is the graph of the inverse hyperbolic function of sine. And notice that the inverse hyperbolic sine function is, is just kind of a shallower version of the hyperbolic sine function. And what we're going to do in this video is find a logarithmic expression for the inverse hyperbolic sine of x. And the way we do that is we start off by working with this expression here. So from here we would say that e to the y subtract e to the minus y will equal 2 times x. We'll bring it the 2 x over to this side. We have e to the y minus 2x subtract e to the minus y equals 0. And let's get rid of this negative exponent here. We'll multiply both sides equation by e to the y. So we have e to the 2y minus 2x e to the y minus e to the minus y times e to the plus y is e to the 0, which is 1. And this equals 0. And remember, e to the 2y, that's the same thing as e to the y squared. So he, what we have here is e to the y quantity squared minus 2x times e to the y minus 1. And that's a quadratic expression. Remember, the general form is a times the variable squared, which is the variable squared, plus b times the variable to the first power, that's this, plus some constant equals 0. And then when we have a quadratic equation, we can solve it for x with our quadratic formula. Minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac divided by 2 times a. And so here we can solve not for x, but for e to the y. And it's pretty straightforward minus b, that's plus 2x, plus or minus the square root of b squared, that's 4x squared, minus 4ac, that's plus 4, divided by 2 times a, that's just by 2. So this will equal, we can factor the 4 out of this and take it to the outside of the square root sign. 2x plus or minus 2 times the square root of x squared plus 1 divided by 2. Okay, so we can get e to the y. There's no tricks involved here. It's just x plus the square root of x squared plus 1 or e to the y can equal x minus the square root of x squared plus 1. Now something we need to be aware of though is remember what the graph of e to the y looks like. If this right here is 1, it comes out looking something like this where it never becomes zero. It's always a positive value. Now if we look at this, we're subtracting something from x. And in fact, 
what we're subtracting from x is going to be a, lot, a number that's larger than x is. If that was just the square root of x squared, that would be x. We're adding 1 to that number. So this is always going to be a negative expression. So this solution here we discard. This is the only valid one. This one is always going to be positive. Or we take the natural log of both sides and we say y will equal the natural log of x plus the square root of x squared plus 1. Very straightforward. No tricks involved at all. But we have to remember now what is y. We go back up to here. We were working with this equation. Remember, y is also the inverse hyperbolic sine of x. So now we can say that this it equals y, and y is this. So this is equal to x plus the square root of x squared plus 1. So there is pretty straightforward to derive a logarithmic form of what the inverse hyperbolic sign of a, of a variable is. Now, we have a little bit of extra time Let's just keep this. Suppose when we were here, at this point, we multiply both sides of the equation by e to the y. Or suppose that we multiply both sides of the equation by e to the minus y. Then here, we would have 1 minus 2x times e to the minus y minus e to the minus 2y equals 0. I multiply e by negative 1 and we'll have e to the minus 2y plus 2x e to the minus y minus 1 equals 0. And just like we did before, we can solve this for e to the minus y. We get two values. We we'll only keep one of them because remember what the graph of e to the minus y looks like. If this is 1, it looks like this. This is now the graph of e to the minus y. But again, it never becomes zero. It's always positive. So, when we solve this with the quadratic formula, we get two forms. But the one that we keep is minus x plus the square root of x squared plus 1. And here, this would be a negative, if x is positive, this would be a negative x value but we're adding to it um, a number that's greater than that negative x value, so it comes out being a net positive number. But what's interesting here is, if we compare these two, here is e to the y, here is e to the minus y, but of course this is just the reciprocal of this. So, 1 over x plus the square root x squared plus 1 equals minus x plus the square root of x squared plus 1. And if you had looked at this initially, this, this part here, and thought, what is the reciprocal of this? It may have not seemed so obvious that it comes out to be this expression. 
Well, obviously, if we have it like this, 1 over x plus the square root of x squared plus 1. We want to get rid of this square root sign here. We can just multiply top and bottom by x minus the square root of x squared plus 1 divided by x minus the square root of x squared plus 1 and this would be equal to x minus the square root of x squared plus 1 divided by x squared minus the cross terms drop out of course and we'll have x squared plus 1 x squared minus x squared, that's 0. Now we're dividing 2 by negative 1, so that would be negative x plus this, which is what we had here. Um, so it's it's easy to determine it, but it's not something that would be intuitively obvious. And we point it out now because we'll make use of this relation um, in other videos. We'll discuss more of the inverse hyperbolic functions. Now, one other thing to say in closing here is that here we have, we derive this. What happens if we take the sine, the hyperbolic sine of each side of this equation? Well, if I take the hyperbolic sine of this side of it, that's just going to give me x. So x will equal So that means then that if indeed this is correct, if we did this correct here, well it's pretty simple, it should be right. But if it is, that means if I take the hyperbolic sign of this function here, I should come out and give us x. I don't think we have enough time to do that in this video. But come back and join us in the next video, and we'll do that and see if indeed this holds out to be true.